Assalamu alaikum. So now we will start solving some questions related to the energy analysis uh, chapter uh, because you have quiz on Wednesday on this section. So we will solve several questions now and you will hopefully will get the idea and you will do well in your quiz inshallah. So starting here with the first question. Um, the water level in the tank is 20 meter above the ground. Okay, and uh, a hose is connected to the bottom of the tank and the nozzle at the end of the hose is pointed straight up. The tank is at the sea level and the water surface is open to the atmosphere. Uh, in the line leading from the tank to the nozzle is a pump which increases the pressure of water. If the water jet rises to a height of 27 meter from the ground, determine the minimum pressure rise supplied by the pump to the water line. Okay, so before solving this question, we will first write the energy equation, okay? And we will uh, have some comments about it that you need to remember. P1 divided by the density times P plus alpha 1 one squared by two G two P plus elevation one or Z one plus the head of the pump H sub P uh, equals to P two by rho g okay, plus alpha 2 p2 squared by 2 g plus z2 plus the head of the turbine t okay plus the head the er, the head of the irreversible losses okay now uh, first thing what, when do we apply the energy equation why we don't apply Bernoulli equation because here we have pump okay in this question or even sometimes we may have turbines, okay? And also we are considering here the irreversible losses. In Bernoulli equation, we don't have irreversible losses, okay? The mechanical energy is totally conserved. Like what is the mechanical energy? It's those three terms, this term and this term and this term. The summation of them is the mechanical energy. Now in Bernoulli equation, this, those three terms are conserved, like if one increases, the other one will decrease, maybe this one will stay constant, something like this, okay? But at the end, the summation is conserved. Here, no, part of it will be lost due to the irreversible losses. So we are introducing this term here to consider the irreversible losses, or else the, the equation will, like, will be unbalanced. We need to balance it by adding what's what's have been lost. Okay, this is the irreversible losses. And also we are adding the head of the pump because the pump is adding energy to the first state of the fluid. The fluid will be at a certain state. Okay, then the pump here, let's say the fluid has a certain value of mechanical energy E, then the pump here we have a pump, will increase this mechanical energy of the fluid at state here at state one, here at state two, okay? When it passes through a pump. Uh, on the other hand, the turbine will extract some mechanical energy. That's why we are adding it on the right-hand side, because here's the, here is the state one, okay? It, it is associated with certain mechanical energy, then when it passes through a turbine, the mechanical energy will be reduced. It extracts some of it from the fluid. So we are removing some 
mechanical energy from state one. And then we reach state two here. Okay, so if you, uh, you can, uh, what is this, the head of the turbine, you can move it to the left hand side and it will be minus. So the pump is adding to state one energy and the turbine, if you brought it to the left hand side, it will be taking from the mechanical energy of the fluid because it will be minus. Okay. Those are just the difference between Bernoulli and the energy equation. Okay. Now, coming back to the question, uh, he wants to us to calculate the, the pressure rise supplied by the pump to the water line. Okay. Now, the pressure supplied by the pump to the water line is the, the pressure difference that is associated with this pump here in the question. The pressure difference just between like the inlet and the outlet of the pump. Okay, this is the pump. He wants, he wants us to calculate the pressure difference across the pump or the pressure difference because the pump, the pump is increasing. Always the pump will increase the pressure of the fluid while the turbine will reduce the pressure of the fluid. So here it will increases the pressure. So we have delta P. You want us to calculate this delta P. Okay. So now if you if we come here and apply Bernoulli, uh, sorry, the energy equation. Uh, first here you cannot just directly apply it between this point and this point. Okay. First you need to apply it between this point and this point. Because at this at those two points, we know everything. We know here the pressure is atmospheric. We know here that the velocity is zero. We know here that the elevation is 20. We, uh, and on the, I mean here at this point, consider this is point one. Okay, and this is point two. At point one, I know that the pressure is the atmospheric. I know that the velocity is zero. I know that the elevation is 20 if we are, if we are taking this as a reference, okay? At point two, we know that the elevation is 27. We know that the pressure is atmospheric because it's open here to the atmosphere. And we also know that the velocity is zero. The velocity is zero here, why? Because the fluid, just like uh, the, the, uh, the projectile that you took in physics, I think, okay? When you throw something up, then it will reach to the highest point and it will stop. When it stop here, that means the velocity is zero. If the velocity is not zero, then it will keep rising to infinity. Okay, but here it will stop. Then the velocity is zero, and then it will fall back again. So here the velocity also is zero. Okay, at point two, and uh, what else? We said the pressure is atmospheric. The velocity is zero, and we know the elevation. If you apply it between this point and this point, you don't know where is the the velocity here at the outlet of the pressure of the of the pump. You don't know the pressure just at the outlet of the pump. Okay, so you cannot apply it between those point those two points directly now. So uh, proceeding with the solution now. Here the we can cancel this term and this term because the 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 pressures are equal, they are the atmospheric. And here at one, we have no velocity. And we have Z1. At two, we have also no velocity. And we have no turbine here. Okay. Now, uh, Z1 plus the head of the pump. Uh, Z1 plus the head of the pump is equal to Z2 plus the, the head loss. Okay, now the head loss here, the head loss here is the loss, the, as I said, the irreversible losses due to the, uh, or the, the losses that will, uh, like the irreversible losses, which will convert some of those, some of the mechanical energy and like and dissipate it as a heat okay so this one is in the pipe in the 
pipe itself, there can be some irreversible losses, and also in the pump and in the turbine. Okay. If you don't have you, the, this term, consider those three. Okay. If you don't have for something for the pump or the turbine, that means their efficiency is hundred percent. Okay. There are no losses in the turbine or in the pump. But sorry, this this is the pipe. I mean here. If you don't have like the term is considering the losses in the turbine and in the pump, that means their efficiency is hundred percent. And it's all it's only considering the losses of in the pipe. Because in the pipe, as the fluid passes in the pipe, there will be also some losses in the mechanical energies and it will be reflected in this term. Okay. So here in this question, there's nothing mentioned about the head loss. Okay, there is nothing mentioned about the efficiency of the pump, and there is nothing mentioned about the head loss in the pipe. Okay, so I will just consider it as zero here. Although it won't be zero, okay, but here if, if you consider it, then you you won't be able to find the head of the pressure, the head of the pump. So you need to consider it zero here, find the head of the pump. Okay, and also he didn't mention anything about the losses here, so you just consider it as like perfect. Okay, there is the there is no no loss in the mechanical energy. Okay, so Z one is twenty here. Plus the head of the pump is equal to Z2, which is 27. That means the head of the pump is 7 meter. Okay. Why, me why meter? Because the, here the, the form of this energy is written in a way that all the terms here are in the are in unit of meter. Okay, all the terms here are in unit of meter. The head is in meter, Z is in meter, V squared over 2G is in meter, and P2 over rho G is in meter. Okay, you can write it in other forms, like in all in to be in Pascal, like Bernoulli equation, or you can write all of them to be in energy, uh, sorry, not energy, uh, power in watts. Okay, but I prefer to write it in head. Okay, head, which is in meter. Uh, now, uh, okay, we calculated the head of the pump. Now we will apply the energy equation again between this point and this point at the inlet and at the outlet of the pump. Okay, so you have P1 by rho G. Plus alpha one P one squared by two G plus Z one. The head of the pump will not change. It is the same whether you apply it between the first two points in the first equation or here between the inlet of the pump and the outlet of the pump. Okay. The head the head of the pump will not change. Is equal to P one, sorry P two by rho g plus alpha two P two squared by two g plus Z two. Okay, and we don't have. We said we don't have uh, irreversible losses, and we also don't have uh, a turbine. Okay, now here the, uh, the velocity at the inlet and at the exit of the pump is the same because here if you have a pump, OK, 
Okay. If the diameter here at the inlet of the pump and the diameter at the exit of the pump is the same, then the velocity will be the same according to the continuity equation. A1, V1 is equal A2, V2. Okay. So if the areas are the same, then the velocity will be the same. Okay. So we can cancel those two terms. We can. Nothing mentioned about the diameters of the inlet and the outlet of the pump, so you can consider it as the same. So just cancel the velocity terms, okay? And uh, we have uh, the, also the elevation difference here, as you can see at this point and at the exit. Yeah, there is, you can say it's negligible pressure, uh, negligible uh, height difference. So you can also cancel Z1 and Z2 because they are almost the same. And whenever you have a pump or a turbine, you can neglect the 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 height difference. Okay, if there is nothing nothing mentioned in the question about the height of each of each end. Okay, and what else? Yes. So we can rearrange the equation and find the pressure difference. The pressure at point two is higher because we said the pump increases the pressure. So the pressure at point two is higher at, than that at point one. So we need to find P2 minus P1. So P2 minus P1. This is divided by rho g. And this is also divided by rho g. Okay, so we brought P1 to the right hand side. Okay, is equal to the head of the pump. Therefore, P2 minus P1 is equal to delta P, which is required in the question, and it is equal to the head of the pump multiplied by rho multiplied by G. Okay. So here the head of the pump is seven times the density is thousand of the water. Always remember the density of water is thousand because you you won't be provided this number. Okay. Times nine point eight one and you find the answer. Okay. Uh, here, uh, sorry, I made a mistake here. If you apply it directly, like if you want to directly apply it between point one and point two, yeah, you can cancel the velocity terms. Before I said that you don't know the velocity here, but you can cancel it because the the area here is the same, so you do it. So you can cancel both terms. But the problem will be that you here, like imagine I will apply it directly between point one and point two. Okay, so you have. Uh, you have this equation, okay? This equation, the same, okay? You will cancel the velocity from both sides, okay? And the pressures, we need to find the pressure difference, and we will cancel the head of the turbine. We have no losses. We assume that it's, uh, there is no irreversible losses. All the mechanical energy is conserved, and uh, we have the head of the pump. So we, we now we will have two unknowns. We can also cancel Z1 and Z2. Now we have the head of the pump is unknown and also the pressure difference is unknown. So that's why we apply it first between point one here and point two to find the head of the pump. Now we will utilize this head of the pump and apply again the energy equation between one and two and find the corresponding pressure difference along the pump, the pump itself between the inlet and the outlet of the pump. Okay. So this is for the first question. 
just link to the next one. Here it says that water enters a hydraulic turbine through a 30 centimeter diameter pipe. Okay, this is the inlet of the turbine. The cross sectional area is 30 centimeter. The or sorry, the diameter is 30 centimeter. And the, this is the flow rate. The flow rate 0 0.6 meter cubed per uh, second. And the exit is 25 centimeter in diameter here. The pressure drop in the turbine is measured by a mercury manometer to be 1.2 meter. Now he gave you the pressure drop. Uh, uh, the pressure drop between the between the inlet and the outlet of the turbine. And the first question it was required to you, for me to find it. Here he gave it to you, but in a form of meter of manometer, uh, in a form of meter of mercury. Okay, in a manometer. Now for a com for a combined turbine generator efficiency of eight, uh, of eighty three percent, determine the net electric power output. Now, uh, this system, now you need to understand what, what's the purpose of this system. Here we have a turbine, okay? So here, turbine. The turbine takes the fluid, take the fluid which is associated with a certain, certain mechanical energy, and here, it reduces this mechanical energy and utilize this difference. This extracted E here is, is somehow high. Okay, and then it extracts some of it and reject the, the fluid and uses this extracted E or the difference between those two points to produce a shaft work. Okay. Work of a shaft. This work of a shaft will be inputted to the generator. G, and then the generator will use this to convert the shaft work into electricity, E. Okay. Now the efficiency, what's the efficiency of the turbine? The efficiency of the turbine is the, the work, the shaft work, divided by the difference between the mechanical energies here. Okay. And the efficiency of the generator is the electric power output divided by the mechanical work input or the shaft work input. Okay, now the combined efficiency 38 is the turbine efficiency multiplied by the generator efficiency. Okay, so this is just for your information. Okay, now uh, here what was required the net electric power output. Okay, now Applying the energy equation between point one here and point two here. Okay. Always take point one as the, the start of the flow and point two the end of the flow. Okay. So here the flow starts and here the flow ends. So P1 by rho G. And he said also here the Kinetic energy correction factor disregarded. The kinetic energy correction factor is the alpha. So alpha is equal to one or disregarded. Okay. Whenever he doesn't mention anything about the correction factor, assume it to be one. If he mentioned a certain value, then use a certain value. And if he is neglected, then just neglected. Assume it one. Okay. So plus now I will not I will not write alpha because it's one. V1 squared by 2G plus uh, Z1. Here we don't have a pump, so we, the left hand side, there is no head of the pump, is equal to P2 by rho G plus V2 squared by 2G. Plus Z2, plus the head of the turbine, plus the head of the irreversible losses. Okay. 
Now here first we can calculate the velocities, right? The velocity at one and two because we are given the flow rate and we are given the diameter. So just divide the flow rate by the diameter here by the cross-sectional area for the 30 centimeter diameter pipe and by the cross-sectional area for the 25 centimeter diameter pipe, you'll find the velocity at one and the velocity at two. So the velocity at one is equal Q by A1. Okay, which is 0 0.6 divided by the cross-sectional area by d squared over 4. d is 30 centimeter, that is 0 0.3 meter squared by 4, which is 0 0.6 divided by. 0.3 squared over 4. 8.49 meter per second. And V2, graph Q by A2, which is 0 0.6 divided by pi. The meter at the exit is 25. Or 0.25 in SI unit divided by 4, which is 12.22 meter per second. Okay. The elevation difference, you can consider it, as I said in the first question, negligible between the inlet and the outlet of the turbine. There is, a, there is an elevation difference, but it is not of that important. It is negligible or small. So you can just delete those terms. Now we have the pressure, P1 and P2. We can calculate, we cannot calculate P1 and P2, but he gave me Delta P here. He gave me delta P here in a form of meter of mercury. Then how can I find from this meter mercury, this uh, meter mercury, how can I find the pressure difference? Okay. Here, uh, you remember the the manometer. Okay, you have here the, the turbine. This is the inlet. This is the outlet. Okay. Here we can attach a manometer. Something this way. between the inlet and the outlet. Okay, the inlet of the turbine and the outlet of the turbine. Now here the pressure, the, uh, where is the pressure is higher? The pressure higher will be at the inlet of the turbine because here the mechanical energy is higher. And so this point will be associated with higher pressure. So it will push the mercury more, okay? Assume that he said that there is a mercury, it's measured by a mercury. So the pressure here will push the mercury more than here, because here the pressure is lower. Okay, so the 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 the, the mercury will rise here and will drop here. Okay, now I will just delete the turbine because I want you to focus on the manometer. Okay. Here we have mercury. And here we have water because the, the water is flowing is water. Okay. Now we also said what that the pressure difference, uh, sorry, the elevation difference. 
between the inlet and the outlet of the turbine is something negligible. So I can reduce this. I can to delete this. I can draw it something this way. Okay, and no need for the for this. Okay, so this is the reduced manometer. Okay, this is just the manometer. Now here we have the inlet pressure, P1. And here we have the exit pressure, P2. Okay, so now if you want to go from P1 to P2, you have P1. Apply the same principle that you learned in chapter two, I think. Here we have P1. And imagine this is um, Okay, this is uh, assume this is H1 and this is H2. Okay, so here P1. Now I will go down. So I will add more weight of the fluid. So I will make plus rho of water. Here there is water, the blue G. I will go from here till here. So H1 plus H2. Okay, then I reach this point. Now this point has the same pressure as this point because they are at the same elevation. Now I will go up. When I go up, I subtract minus rho, rho of what here? The black one is mercury. Rho of mercury, G. H2 from here to here. Now I reach this point. This is H2. Also, I'll subtract raw water. Final step G H1 from here to here. And by that, I reach to P2. Okay. Now, here you can see here, I can cancel what. Rho water GH1 can cancel with this one, okay? Rho water GH1. So you are left, so P1 plus Rho water GH2 minus Rho mercury GH2 is equal to P2. Now we said that the pressure at the inlet is higher, right? P at the inlet, P1 is higher because the turbine extracts the mechanical energy. So it will reduce the pressure of the inlet and we will have P2. So if I want to subtract here, you can bring uh, P2 to the other side. So you have P1 minus P2, okay? which is equal to uh, GH2, take GH2 as a common factor, okay, and then subtract the density of mercury minus the density of water. Okay, this is the pressure difference. Now, what you are given in the question, the 1.2 meter is this one, the height difference. So you need to convert it into pressure difference. Okay. So here, delta P equal to 9.81, the gravitational acceleration multiplied by H2, which was, was given the question, 1.2, okay? And then, let me just, 1.2, okay? 
and then you will subtract the density of mercury minus the density of water. The density of mercury, it should be provided for you, okay? Um, I don't really know what's the density of mercury, just let me check it. Okay, the density of water is 1000 and the density of mercury, I think something like 1300 or One one three five six zero. Okay, this is the density of mercury. One three five six zero. So this is equivalent to nine point eight one one point two one three five six zero minus thousand. This is one four seven point eight five kilopascal. Point eight six kilopascal. Okay. Now we have the pressure difference term minus this term. Uh, what also we are lifted with, we can Okay, here in the turbine, in the turbine, what we have in the turbine? This is the turbine, okay, the inlet and the outlet, correct? And then uh, the turbine uses the mechanical energy reduction in the fluid flow and convert it to a shaft work. Okay, so we have a shaft work and then we have some irreversible losses, okay? Those are the irreversible losses. So the head of the turbine, the head of the turbine is the the shaft output, okay? The useful shaft output, useful. Okay, useful means what what is extracted from E from the mechanical energy of the fluid and converted into a shaft work. This is the useful. The total, the total is the total reduction in the mechanical energy. But this reduction in the mechanical energy will not fully convert it into a shaft work. Some of it will be dissipated. Okay. So the head of the pump is this. Here is the head of the pump. Uh, sorry, the head of the turbine here. The useful shaft work. Now, if you are considering that there is no dissipation here, that means the efficiency of the turbine is 100. It's 100%. Whenever you are not considering there is a heat, a heat dissipation, or there is some irreversible losses. Okay, so all the useful output is is due to the reduction in the mechanical energy here. It's converted into useful work output. So here, what I will do, I will consider that the efficiency of the of the turbine is hundred. Okay, so I have HT, and I will assume that there is no head losses because here. Whenever there is 100% efficiency, there is no irreversible losses, right? He, for the turbine, and he didn't mention something about the 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 head the irreversible losses in within the pipe itself. Okay, the pipe. So you can consider this term as zero. This term as zero because no losses from the turbine and no losses in the pipe. No losses in the turbine, meaning that it's 100% efficient. Okay, so uh, I have the head of the turbine. This is the only unknown. Here the efficiency, here in the question, he said that, said that the combined efficiency of the turbine and generator is 38. But that doesn't mean that the turbine has 100% efficiency 
and the generator has a 38 efficiency because the combined efficiency is the multiplication of the turbine efficiency multiplied by the generator efficiency. The multiplication of them of them is, is 38 percent. So, but that doesn't mean that the turbine has 100 percent efficiency. But I assume that it's 100 percent efficient and there is no HL or reversible head losses, and because I will obtain here the total work here, the total work or the total head here at the shaft, and then I will assume that the generator is 38 percent efficient. So I will multiply this head, okay, by 38, and then I will get the electricity. So at the end, I will also obtain the electricity output because it doesn't matter if I put here this 100 and this one 38, or I put this one, for example, any other number and this one any other number, but at the end, the multiplication is 83, then you will obtain the, the exact value of E, okay? No matter how you distribute the efficiency between them. But here, the only way to solve this is to put the turbine 100 and the generator 38. Okay, the end result, the electricity will not change. At the end, it is multiplied by 38 total. But here, here I use this way because I need to solve for the head of the uh, head of the turbine and then insert it at the generator and multiply it by 38. So this is the only way to solve the question. Okay. So proceeding. We have uh, can P1 bring the P1 minus P2, okay, by rho G. We brought P2 to the other side, and then you have. plus V1 squared by 2G, then you have in the other side V2, V2 squared by 2G plus the head of the turbine. Here the head of the turbine, assuming it's 100% efficient, okay? And there is no HL neither in the turbine nor in the piping, okay? So, the pressure difference is 147.86. This is in kilopascal, so in pascal multiplied by 1000, divided by the density of water is 100, by the gravitational acceleration plus V1. How much is V1? V1 is 8.49. 8.49 squared by 2G is equal to V2. P2 is 12.22. 12.22 squared by 2 by 9.81. Here, this is 9.81 also. 9.81. Okay, plus the head of the turbine. So the head of the turbine is equal to one two two squared.
The head of the turbine is 11.135 meters. Okay. Now you will, you will multiply this one, the head of the turbine, by 80. What was the efficiency? Now, this is the head of the turbine. This is the work here. The work here, assuming there is no any losses, the total work here, completely the the the, the difference in the mechanical energy is completely used to have a, a shaft work. Now this shaft work or the head of the turbine here is multiplied by th eighty three to find the head of the electricity. Okay, so the head of the electricity. Head of turbine by by 0 0.83 will give us the head of the electricity okay which is equal to 11.135 by 0 0.83 0 0.83 is equal 9.24 meter now this is the head of the electricity but what he what he wants in the question he wants the, the net electric power output he want the power so how can we convert from a head to a power the head how we can obtain the power in i mean w dot w dot in, in kilowatts. You just multiply the head, okay? The head, multiply it by the mass flow rate, multiply it by G, okay? It's just like the, the potential energy. You remember when you have, a, for example, a box, that is, for example, five meter above the ground. How do you calculate the potential energy? You calculate it. You multiply the uh, the mass, the mass of the of the box, multiplied by g, multiplied by its elevation, which give you energy in uh, joule. Now here I'm using the same thing. You are multiplying the head. The head is represent like the, an elevation. Okay, the head by g. By now m dot because I want in what? If you want in uh, in joule, you multiply by m. But here in what? I multiply by m dot. So 9.24 by g 9.81 and m dot m dot is equal to what? Is equal to rho multiplied by Q. Rho of the water is 100,000 and Q it was given 0 0.6 at the beginning. So this will give you the 9.24 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by 1000 multiplied by 0 0.6 which is 5.4.4 kilo. Watts. Okay.